Obviously, the whole history of it is incredibly vast. It covers many millennia. Um, and so does archaeology. So to kind of squeeze it all into um, 10 minutes is uh, not an easy thing at all. But, so what I really did was look towards um, a question that I frequently get asked, and that is how old is the woods? Happens all the time. Um, so what I'd like to be able to do is actually look at it by going backwards in reverse. Right, so what is ancient woodland? People have already touched on this. Um, Kent Wildlife Trust defines it as ancient woods and areas of woodlands. You can read this, we've already reiterated this. But this is through national guidance as well. Um, so they are taking what is technically the rule of the law, the land, um, and uh, putting it into their own documentation. But this really, a quick brief um, scan through that, will show how they define what is ancient woodland. It's persistent since 1600. I think as um, was already mentioned, it doesn't have to be the same piece of wood, it has to have tree cover. So you're looking at the diversity of the plant matter that's within it. Um, but it also, they are relatively undisturbed by human development. As a result, they are unique and complex communities of plants, fungi, insects, and other microorganisms. It doesn't touch the archaeology. Um, a good view, people will probably see this, a similar picture to this um, on, on many occasions, but this obviously gives us a highlight of the main area of where the woods are. Obviously some of them are named Oxford Wood, Pitwood, Woodlands Wood. We obviously go into Wellwood off the screen here and down towards Isledon, but of course Isledon comes under Kingston, not Addisham, but we'll claim it. Anyway. Um, we then go up into, it's known as Tower Wood, but obviously the Ordnance Survey called it Oxenden Shaw, the Oxenden family being um, as with oxen and wood, being big landowners throughout the medieval and early post-medieval period. Their power base was in Barrow, Barrow Court, um, but one of their secondary houses was actually on the outskirts of Wingham, known as Dean or Dane House. Um, and the principal route between the two houses of the Oxendons, who were the big manorial landowners for Addisham at that time, um, followed this route, which comes along the side of the woods, comes all the way along, eventually becomes the street, and you can follow this all the way from Bossington and on towards Wingham. Um, there we are, nice Google Earth image, gives us a good impression of what we're talking about when we say about woodland. You can see the open fields surrounding us. We have the relict remnants of the small <coughs> country estate of Woodlands Manor um, in the centre here. Um, and uh, what I'm going to look at is really highlight key primary sources that we would use to try and give an idea as to how old Addisham Woods are. Modern technology has moved on many, many, um, uh, quite considerably um, over the last uh, 20 years or so. Now, of course, there's a, an item known as LIDAR, which is uh, um, laser imaging from aircraft, which gives you the contours, and they produce these beautiful maps. Um, one of the things that you can see is, obviously, here's Addisham, here's the railway, Here's our two pieces of woodland going towards Isledon down here. Woodlands is in there. Um, and of course, we've got to ask ourselves, why is it actually where it is? You notice that Addisham Woods is two very distinct arcs. There's one here and one there. So what is the reason behind this? And if we strip away that, you'll notice all of a sudden that the two arcs are on the highlands here with Woodlands Estate in this. Now these are dry river valleys, post-glacial, these would have had springs and streams that would have fed and carved into the top of the chalk. But for those of you that uh, are keen gardeners, if you were to dig into your garden, no doubt, if it's anything like mine, you'd go through the topsoil, straight onto, not chalk straight away, but you'd come to this really hard clay and flints, mm -hmm. which is quite important because it's incredibly difficult to um, cultivate. Modern machinery can do it, but when you're looking at prehistoric man, medieval man, Roman, so on and so forth, they find it incredibly difficult. So wherever you tend to find this relic woodland, um, ancient woodland, it tends to be where you have surviving clay and flint because it's not conducive to their, um, uh, to their cultivation. So what would we look at if we were looking at how old is Addisham Woods? Well, of course, in the last couple of hundred years, we've had a fantastic thing known as the Ordnance Survey. Um, and this actually maps the woods um, going back to the 1870s. So here we have 1929. 
1907 hasn't changed a lot. 1898 still hasn't changed a lot. 1871 it hasn't changed at all. So already we can push our limits back to the mid to late 19th century. Um, you can also use the um, tithe map, which is 1828 for uh, addition. It's one of the earliest ones of its kind. Um, though it doesn't illustrate this lovely sort of blocks of trees, you can look at the names allocated for plots of land and they are exactly the same. You've got Oxenden Shaw, you've got um, uh, uh, Oxenden Wood, all these sort of names are still relevant there. Um, so what we can do, we're already pushing it back to the 1820s, so we can say that we're getting closer to that 400 year requirement. We can push it a little further back, Woodlands, it was then uh, when this postcard was produced in the uh, um, early 20th century, it was known as the Woodlands, Woodlands Manor, um, built by John Dilnock, who's buried up in our churchyard. Um, it was a small, gentrified country seat with its own estate, um, its own parkland around it, and of course it sits slap bang between those two sections of woodland. It's called Woodlands for a reason, because the woods are there, so we're already getting back almost to the early 19th century. But we have new woodlands farmhouses. Now these might seem peripheral to the woods themselves, but they're quite key because new woodlands farmhouse, as it was then known, is new because in 1650 it replaced an earlier woodlands farmhouse. There we are, woodlands farm, now known as Dane Court. Um, from the outside, it looks like a 17th century building, but inside it is a wheeled and timber framed house of the late 14th, early 15th century. When you start looking at the Oxenden papers in the cathedral archives that are vast, they actually have a specific portion that is to Woodlands or the Woodlands estate. This is one of their possessions. This is probably not just a farmhouse that farmed the lands behind, but also managed the Woodlands that was a, um, uh, an actual crop. So in other words, they were cutting the trees, they were taking a crop out, they were um, putting pigs into it because pigs are traditionally Panage into woodland and so on. Um, so we're able to push it back already into the late 14th, early 15th century. So what do we see when we, uh, as a physical evidence within there? Now, as a managed piece of woodland, you will see abandoned hollow ways. Walk through the woods, traipse through it, I'm sure most of you have. You will notice here, here is the hollow way. It's a beautiful hollow. It doesn't get traipsed anymore, and I don't think this one's still used as a public footpath. Um, but it's literally a hollow way through the volume of people who have trodden the path and literally worn it um, down below the surrounding ground. Hollow ways still in use. I said about that main route between Barrow coming into Addisham itself. This is the route that you would take. Um, and yet again, look at the fields and the woodland either side. This is actually worn away. It's an ancient route. Um, but also we're looking at ancient trees along hollow ways and along paths that are still being used. Right, we're pushing it back a lot further now. We can add into this the Doomsday Survey um, following the uh, Norman Conquest. Addisham actually has a large amount of acreage that is regarded and turned over to woodland. So it's seen as a valuable asset even in the Doomsday. When we start looking at Addisham in the Anglo-Saxon period, woodland is a primary source of its wealth, not just its farming. But there's some very important features that are within and around our um, woodlands. Um, these aren't ours, sadly, but it gives a good impression of during the Iron Age of a thing known as Iron Age banjo enclosures. You can see why they call it very, very typical banjo-shaped. But they are exclusively to central southern England. We do find them elsewhere going up into Scotland and so on and so forth, so they're exceptionally rare in this part of the world. We have one, there's one. This is um, uh, Woodlands Manor, is down here. So this is the road as you come out and then go off towards Tower Road. So we have that one. That's a scheduled ancient monument, protected by an act of parliament and government. You can't dig on that unless you want to stretch it Her Majesty's pleasure. Um, we also have, it's a rather dark one, can you see this one here, with these little passages coming out? Um, if you go up to um, New Woodlands Farm, this is the footpath that will take you to Mumfield Woods and up over the downs, this is in the field next door to it. So that's two. And Tower Woods, this is Tower Woods. 
This is field adjacent, and you can see there's another one. Now, it doesn't just stop at that boundary because these predate boundaries, existing boundaries. So this enclosure will extend underneath this. With this, you can see internal features. No doubt there will be house remains, um, rubbish pits and burials, possibly, and so on and so forth. So we have three. So that gives us the Iron Age. I've already said that this one is going under the woods. Would suggest that the woods aren't here at the time. Well, we have another very, very key feature that survives in Addison Woods. Um, not the best picture to see it on, but it's more listed than anything else. But what you'll notice, can you see this little dot just there? If you walk through the woods and you take up a diversion off of one of the paths, you'll come to this and it's a mound with a ditch around it. And it's almost certainly a prehistoric burial mound. Now, the fact that it's still standing above ground it is a rare survivor in Addisham and in Kent, to say the least. If you look at Google Earth and you look in the surrounding fields and on the Barren Downs all the way around Addisham, you will see on certain ones beautiful dark circular rings. They are burial mounds that you dig a ditch, you put the soil in the middle, your burial goes in the mound. Where we've got intensive agriculture, those mounds eventually erode and get ploughed flat. So what you're looking at is the infill of the dark quarry ditch around it. Here, it hasn't been ploughed or flat, and the reason being is because it's been covered by woodland. And that's the main reason. But when it was originally created, it must have stood proud because these are visual monuments. They are to be seen in the landscape. It's a, it's a, a cenotaph to the dead person. Um, so we have one, and there it is. Not the easiest thing to photograph, certainly not in, uh, with, with the theatre, but you will notice just here, this rise, and this is the ditch coming around it. So an incredibly important survival. There are probably in Kent, maybe no more than 40 or 50 surviving standing barrows. Um, if you go towards um, Stonehenge, Salisbury Plain, you'll see them all over the place. Right, last picture. Um, this is an enhanced LiDAR scan showing our Oxenden hollow way, should we say, coming into the village. You'll notice that the wood banks and the ditches that indicate the parcels of land that would have been um, uh, actually cultivated as trees, but also used as a crop, so that they would then be able to take the material wood out and transport them. But what is more important with this, here's our barrow, shows up in the corner here, but what's more important, can you see these faint lines coming through here? This is an underlying field system that predates the woods. These field systems are known as coaxial field systems, and we see these on the earliest farmers. So we're looking at the early Neolithic period, and they continue like this right the way through and into the Roman period. Unfortunately, we can't date these because they've never been excavated, they've never been looked at, and, of course, you can't see these from the normal Google Earth image because of the tree cover. But here, you've clearly got, and you can see elements of it still surviving in the surrounding underneath here. Um, so what this really tells us is, if we ask that question again, how old is Addition Woods? It was fields in the Neolithic period, which fits very nicely with British colonisation and settlement patterns. Um, we have open land where you've got few new monuments being built. But then, of course, by the Iron Age, you've got those banjo enclosures. It's quite possible that that's when animals are starting to be um, grazed in the area pigs, and that's when the, um, the woods probably start to be formed and fashioned into proper cultivated material. Um, so if I was a betting man, I would say that our woods could easily be traced back to the Iron Age. 